Hello there. We will be returning to the main story this episode with Airman, Rufus, Villeth, and Shortwing after our brief spicy break with a Halloween one-shot by Aiden. For those that need a refresh, we left off working our way through what seemed to be an alchemist hideout slash bunker that the strange bird we found flew into. After a few awkward interactions with lizard-human hybrids and a silencer, we escaped shortly after accidentally setting the place on fire. You retrace your steps back to the Waystone and look in the direction of where the abandoned facility was. Though all you see is the pillar of smoke on the horizon, you four settle in for the night in a small cave. And then does, if you guys want to talk to each other about what just happened in character, you can do that now. It's up to you guys. Villith is going to go try to find some food, actually. I cast Goodberry. Oh. <laughs> hey, you found the food. Damn it. I want to find a deer. Philip only eats meat. <laughs> Do you? Um, go hunt for some food. I won't cast good berry. I'll let Bill go get food. I don't while I'm in the corner. While I'm resting, I'd like to perform my weapon bond ritual. I'm going to bond myself to my cool ass sword. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and uh, this means that I can't be disarmed of the weapon unless I'm incapacitated. And I can summon it as a bonus action to my hand. Nice. nice. How do you get that ability? Is that a feat? Uh, I don't remember, part, but it's part of the Eldritch Knight thing. I think like you get it. At okay. Level yeah, three that's or actually something. that sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do you, how how does your how does your bonding go? Do you just like lather it with like sword oil for a couple hours? Yeah. Dude. Like under the moonlight. I, I I really I give it a massage. It's a it's a very it a nice, nice story. story. Whisper sweet nothings into its ear. Yeah, we get we get real comfortable with it. It already it's honestly has, a little like, weird, mm-hmm. and I feel like everyone else in the cave would probably be kind of freaked out. I'm into it. Is your shirt off the entire time? Oh, of course. <laughs> He's talking shit to all of us. He's like, "Yeah, we know you have all the kills." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> yes, that's what the sword says. It retorts back. Uh-huh. <laughs> Rue, are right. you ever tired of being drenched in dried blood? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my favorite thing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, suddenly everybody's uncomfortable. My favorite things. Uh, it just kind of happens that way, man. I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we've we've went past rivers. You could bathe. <laughs> are you trying to tell me to take a bath? I, I just, I'm trying to understand. You see, I am a scholar. <laughs> he's lathering on deodorant while he's having this conversation with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, G. I, I ignore this this nerd and go back to my my, my weapon bonding, sharpening his sword. <laughs> when I when I when I res- get back from my hunt, can I can I turn and I just go? You need to take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> You stank. You smell worse than the privates beneath us. The the what? The privates beneath us. The primates? Privates. Balls. No, not balls. You smell worse than ball fun. Privates is in the military rank. <laughs> Philip oh, is a military privates. officer. Oh, okay. I was saying primates, and I was like, there's monkeys no, in this privates. game now, too? What's going privates. on? Privates. <laughs> okay. Uh, fine, whatever. I'll find the next river and... Take a bath, and all of you can leave me alone. Morrow's going <laughs> to chuckle, and Thank he's going to draw. Uh, he's going to write monkey and druidic on the cave wall. <laughs> How'd my hunt go, by the way? Uh, give me a survival check. A survivability? A survival check. Did I stutter? Yeah, I did. <laughs> that is going to be a lovely 12. Uh, you find you find a couple rabbits, you know, enough for for you and the other meat eaters in the party because you know Varro doesn't really eat a whole lot. It's not going to fill you up, but it's it's sufficient. Hmm. This will be enough. I don't come back. So you guys, you guys have your long rest. All your stuff recharges. Your health goes back up. Yada yada yada. Uh, morning comes, and you pack up your small camp as daylight breaks through the cloudy morning. You all step on the waystone and visualize the name Willow's Watch, which is the town um, closest to you. And the runes surrounding the waystone begin to glow an incandescent blue, and reality just fades away from you. And then it comes back, and you find yourselves in the town square of Willow's Watch. 
the cobblestone streets and stone buildings stretch far with a few people going on about their day. To the immediate left of you, however, you see a huge crowd gathered around. Echoing all the way back to you, you hear a man shout, They are here! They, we have all seen it! The alchemists come in the night and attack our sons and daughters. They kill our children our livestock to weaken us before they invade us. Look at the farm on the edge of town, or the poor uh, parents of the Sandheaver boy. And you sort of hear the crowd sort of mutter and agree amongst themselves. Wait, was this in reference to our appearance, or are they like shouting at someone? No, this is already going on. Okay. Oh, okay. Like, you came into this. I mean, everything around us always catches on fire. So, I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> yeah. if as we show up, we're just <laughs> Safe like this band of... The, we're, Jeff's going to turn us into alchemists accidentally. Or we're going to turn ourselves into alchemists. I, by, I by could uh, alter myself as uh, an alchemist <laughs> yeah. and just walk in. God, I don't think that would go well. Yeah, probably not. This a good is out. Of, this is out uh, of game. I'm just talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, how far are we from this crowd to our left? Uh, probably like like 50, 75 feet. Okay. It's, it's well within earshot. So wait, have we, we have we uh, hit the waystone yet? You are you are already in in the new town. Oh, okay. Um, how many people approximately do I see off to our left? Seventy feet or so. Like like twenty five thirty people, a pretty pretty good sized crowd for this um small ish village. Um, is there any type think... of like hill that we can get on top of to see over the crowd and see what the commotion is? Um, from from where you are, you just sort of see people. There's no like elevated platform or like that. Oh, we're in the town, right? Yes, you're in the town, town square, Start central area. The wall like Spider Man. <laughs> Yo, I actually no. Shit. I could lift I you up if you sp- wanted. I have spider climb, by the way. <laughs> I, I think mean, we I should see what the commotion's about. Yeah, we should find out what's going on over there. I'm going to reach down and um, pick up my new little wizard friend and hoist him up. Huh. Can you see anything? Hmm. I'm going to you know, try to peek and try to listen to what's going on. Um, you just see uh, this, this crowd has mostly gathered around one individual um, wearing a blue coat who seems to be shouting all these things about the anti-alchemists and the attacks and all that. Um, but as you're looking, you do overhear another voice. Um, uh, it sounds like, a, like an older woman. You're an idiot. We've all seen it. The beast prowling in the woods. We've known about it for months, but none of you are brave enough to confront it. You'd rather stand here and spout lies about an old war than see the truth. Something is out there. Um, and the, the entire crowd looks over to a small older woman. Um, near the back of the crowd. Can I see you? Uh, so upon this, yes. I'm going to say, uh, so the the main man that everyone is uh, turned towards, he's blaming the alchemists for something going on. And then uh, this older woman in the back is blaming some beast in the woods and doesn't believe in the, the alchemists. But uh, maybe we should tell her that they're definitely here. Mm, okay. I'm gonna. I don't uh, know if it's a good idea to get involved. Yeah, I, I'm going to uh, set uh, Armin down and kind of walk over to the older woman. Okay. Um, there are more murmuring and hushed words uh, rippling through the crowd as they begin to slowly disperse and go back about their day around town. And you walk up to this this older young woman who's the older young woman. That's not how that works. This this older woman um, who seems to be like picking up her her basket and and heading away. Uh, ma'am, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, would you have a moment to speak? Oh, yes. What what can I do for you, sir? You speak of a beast in the forest. What do you mean by that? Oh, we've been hearing about it for, for months now. Something prowling out in the woods. It's been killing livestock. It's been taking children away. But there's no way it's the alchemists. It's been far too long. They don't care. I... There's something out there. I'm inclined to agree with you. Is there any sort of bounty out for this beast or anything along those lines? I mean, I I don't know for sure. Maybe talking to some of the victims, you might be able to convince them to pay you for something or reparations. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Mm-hmm. More, one, less wondering about money, more if there was any kind of official affiliation of the beast. Thank you for your time. And your name again? My name is May. May. My name is Villef. 
It's a pleasure, Villef. Pleasure to meet you as well. And she sort of like saunters off with her basket and her goods and all that. Mm. I'm going to pop on back to the group. Boop, 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 boop. Um, I'll I'll kind of come up to uh, uh, Rufus and short ring and all them, and <clears throat> it seems as if she was speaking of some sort of wild beast, not any kind of specific bounty of a creature. So I don't know now what. I suppose we either continue on our original plan or divert to assist the townspeople. Uh, I'm getting bored. Uh, I'm going to look around town a little bit. I'm sure we can track the beast down, but what's in it for us? Mm, she mentioned speaking to the other survivors about possibly putting together some kind of payment, but these are more than likely people who are, have lost family to this. But if it is the alchemist, shouldn't we do something about it? If it's the alchemist, this town would already be dead. I mean, we know they have outposts out in the wilderness seemingly everywhere. Perhaps we should check it out. Fair. I will, once again, no, direct everything to you all for decision making, as you all are much more traveled than me. I've already started walking away from the party to go see if there's any shops or bars. <laughs> there's there's any child of the group. <laughs> you get eaten by a goddamn. I suppose we should go catch up with uh, our little friend. Where uh, where are you headed, Ari? What are, what are you looking for in particular? I'm looking for, you know, see if there's any interesting shops or a bar. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's exhausting teleporting through the world. So, um, you, you don't find a couple shops. There is a general store called the uh, Rope and Petunia. There's also a blacksmith uh, called the Azur's Bastion, and there's also a tavern slash inn combo called Flask of the Soldier. All right, I'll go in inside the flask. Okay, yeah. Um, the Flask of the Soldier is a dual inn and tavern for the local townsfolk as well as, as, well as any random passerbys. It is a uh, terracotta tower with a heather thatched roof and simple furniture on the inside. There are some low ceilings and a fire pit cooking in the middle of the tavern. And to the immediate left of the tavern, I'm, I'm sorry, of the entrance is a small bar uh, staffed by a half-elf male. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm great. And uh, what's your name, Barkeep? Oh, fuck, I have his name somewhere. I definitely <laughs> just put it down. <laughs> um, my name is Othronus. Oh, throne. Dude, sounds like he should be a fucking wizard. Greek. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, throne. Not all elves are wizards, all right? That's racist. It is It is nice to meet you, Thronus. Uh, I am Araman, and I am just traveling through town. So uh, do you have any drink specials for today? Uh, he passes you like a small tablet menu of like common drinks that you'd find in a, in a, in a bar, things like that. <clears throat> cool. I'll just uh, get a nice Ippa and maybe a Ladger. <laughs> uh, I don't like that. <laughs> Are you all going along with him and having some drinks? Um. Yeah, sure. I'll join the group. I'll sit down at the bar, but I won't drink anything. Same. All right. I'll take. I'll, I'll get a, a shot of hard liquor. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we're getting fancy up in here. Man, bourbon. Got. Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm an old man. I need to have some bourbon. <laughs> scotch. Right. You scotch. opt to have some beverages um, after we've all experienced the past few days, and you end up um, finding a table a little farther away from the bar um, with your drinks of choice. And even you, Villa, seem to be at ease with the lack of judgmental eyes uh, prying upon you in this in this town. Uh, a, bit of, a bit of time passes, and Ari, you stand up to go get another round of drinks for your table. And you feel a tapping on your shoulder from behind. Well, I'm going to turn around. And you immediately feel a thunk as someone sucker punches you right in the gut and you fall to the ground on your knees. Uh, oh, do we see this? Yeah. Uh, I immediately stand up and run <clears throat> over and punch the dude. 
Well, hold on, hold Damn on. It. Can I get some, some dialogue first before you start punching people? No, <laughs> I'm a barbarian. <laughs> later. Uh, you run and you punch a uh, a very tall porcelain skinned elf who sort of just stands up and wipes away a little bit of blood on his, on his cheek and goes, "Well, well, well. If it isn't little Ari Fapplestamp in the flesh." Who would have thought that I would ever run to a runt like you out here in the wild? And you, Ari, recognize this to be William Michael Chapwell III, your classmate and rival from the Harvard School of Magic. Holy what shit. The What's the his fuck? name? The guy that always hit him with the dodgeball and dodgeball. William, William Michael Chapwell III. That's like the most country club name I've ever heard in my fucking life. Yeah. Can I try to help uh, Ari up? Yeah, that's totally fine. He uh, definitely went start- to Harvard. I'm gonna start blasting. Uh, I have. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and then I started blasting. Uh, I I have grown a lot since school, and I am not taking this fucking douchebag shit the anymore. Boy. So uh, I'm gonna Dude, magic yeah. missile him right in the stomach. We about to have a bar sure. fight? Hell yeah! Uh, your magic missiles fly out from your fingers in this illustrious magic that you've honed over the years, um, and a. Uh, luminescent white light sort of flies up above him and it all gets blocked and the missiles just dissipate in the air. I'm going to turn to Ari and just go, Ari, are we fighting or not? <sighs> no. Yeah. Oh. William turns to face you and he has a sneer on his face. And you must be what? His handlers? I'm not surprised. There's no way little Ari could be able to survive this far away from home. And you're here to fight the monster too, I'm sure. Good luck. I hired the best and only hunter in this tiny hole in the ground. After he said, and he, oh, sorry, I was gonna say after he, and had, he, after he says hunter, can I go ahead and activate rage and then pick him up by the throat? <laughs> <laughs> um, before you do that, he does clap his hands, and from the other side of the bar, a brick shit house of a person. Um, and a tattered gray and red cloak begins to walk towards you guys oh, shit. Um, with a hair with, sorry, with a hair with a hood that shrouds most of his face. Um, and he begins walking towards you before stopping dead in his tracks. Do you still want to do this? Hmm. How big is this person like Villa size, like six, seven chunky? Yeah, he, he, he's a little bit, a little bit shorter than you, but he's like, he's a brick shit house of a man. I will, I will pull Ari. I'll pull Ari back and kind of kind of stand right behind Ari, waiting for his cue. <clears throat> William, what are you even doing here? Aren't you supposed to be on the other side of the world? Oh, I just want to go on a little adventure, you know, a little tangent. Something to warm the blood up, you know. You probably got expelled. <laughs> mm-hmm. He just glares at you a little bit. Um, Villif, you notice that the, the gaze of the person in the cloak seems locked onto you, but you can't quite figure out why. It lo- he- and as the figure slowly begins to remove their hood, um, a flood of painful memories fills your mind as you lock eyes with an alchemist that you know personally as Israel, the collector. The very same man that guided you through battle and punished you when you refused orders and beat you into submission when you attempted to flee. And he was there on the day that you finally escaped his grasp for the last time. And he says nothing but his bright yellow eyes stare daggers into you as he stands beside William Michael Chapwell III. I'm going to meeting all these old friends. Are um, are Rue's parents going to come out from the shadows too? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to turn to, I'm going to turn to Ari, Rufus and uh, and, uh, Swiftwing. And I'm just going to go, it's an alchemist, the hunter. So we shouldn't get in the bar fight right now. I'm going to scoff. So, Mr. Williamson, or whatever you are, you do know you're associating with an alchemist, right? Oh, it's fine. He's harmless, I'm sure. Really? Because he's the one who trained me. He just looks back at, at Israel and looks back at you and goes... I think we know who's the better one here. Funny, because the last well, time I'm the one who gave him those yellow eyes. I'm sorry? I said, funny, because last time I'm the one who gave him those yellow eyes. Mm. Arm bluffer. Well then, little Ari, I hope you manage to get together. I'm going to see you around, he says, laughing as he and Israel walk out of the of the bar. 
I don't know why this reminds me, but like um, of like you know those like eighties movies where it's like on the snow, and like the like a like a like a ski lodge type deal, and like <laughs> they're gonna have to uh, to beat like the top skiers to 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 save the mountain from like the <laughs> from guys who buy it. That's what this feels like right now. Like, how about them apples? Yeah. So they're leaving. Yes. We'll see um, big race. So I want to from the bar as they're leaving yeah i don't know there's no there's no real actual indication that somebody would be aware of this so i'm always going to pursue um placing hunter's mark on the uh, alchemist as he leaves because it just says it's a, a mystical mark and i think only i'm supposed to be the one apparent to it i don't actually know how they put it in context throughout D D. Sure. If you want to do that, that's fine. What, is it, what does that do for you exactly? Well, it's it, one part is uh, damage related. The second part, if I need to find them, I have an advantage, advantage on like tracking them down. So like, if he's going to start okay. his hunt, then it only lasts for about an hour. So it depends on what we do next, but I'll have an easier time finding out where he is. That's up to you if you want to do it. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Sure. I, I think we should get a room so we can talk privately. I don't know who he could have paid off uh, to follow us or listen to our conversations. I don't know why he would do that, but I'm okay with the idea. He's a psychopath. It's the worst person in school and um, even, even more well-off parents than I have. And, who knows what he can he do? He was the richest kid in Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> the richest kid of the West. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go get a room and uh, we can go. Yeah. Uh, he charges you uh, two silver per person for for rooms. I'll, I'll, and he sort of like, like points you up to the stairs. I'll give him a full gold as his tip for the drinks. Look at that. How nice of you. What a gentleman. Yeah. So he gets two silver for a tip. And you guys, you guys all head upstairs to uh, a more secluded area. So, um, should we try to stop them? I, it's, I don't know if we should let this, this alchemist go. He's very dangerous. I could definitely track him. That, that would be incredible. Do we have? A bigger reason to get involved in this now, or is this just something that you want to do, uh, Armin? I, I'm just concerned that there's this alchemist that Vilif knows, and he's he's a very dangerous person. He might hurt other people. The story of that alchemist. His name is Israel, and he is known. He was known at least as the collector. And he's the one who trained people like me, forced us to work on the battlefield for him. And the last time I saw him, he gave me half of the scars on my body. Do you think he'd be too powerful for us to team up that, and take out right now? That was over 15 years ago. So, I don't know. It's possible that he's gotten strong with age. It's also that he's gotten weaker. But I was able to knock him unconscious at the very least last time. This time, with additional help and, you know, a battle not raging around me, might be useful. The issue is your mage friend. What What's their deal? Are they powerful? He is quite powerful. He was always able to best me, somehow able to always counter what I'm doing. But I know he's never gotten into a physical confrontation with anybody. So I don't think he'd be much of a match for you or Rufus or even mm. Shortwing here. You think that maybe... In this regard, if we do take them on, then we switch it up. You all handle my old mentor, and I handle your magic friend. I think that would be the best strategy. What do you two think? Is this alchemist going to have anti-magic 
potential like the last one. Do I remember anything about uh, the magical abilities of uh, Israel? Um, he definitely was not one of the silencers, so he does not have that same anti-magic capabilities that the one you fought previously does. He, wasn't... he is much more of a um, up-in-your-face, melee sort of guy. Yeah. He might have a few spells up, up his sleeve, but nothing in the same uh, regard of what you saw previously. He would have similar magical capabilities to me of able to use my hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, for, for certain benefits. But he is particularly more up in your face. He's not one to use magic to mm, counteract anything. And I've never seen him do anything with uh, his uh, with his um, sort of counteracting the magic like a counterspell. Well, well it'd be a two on one, would it not? Maybe we could take him and the others could take the wizard. I, I think that that would be, um, I think we would have more success that way. I got a good lock on his scent. I'm pretty sure I could find him here if we uh, get on after him I love how your quick. plan is murder and nothing else. <laughs> Look, man, these are evil people. You don't just throw evil people in front and of us and be like, yeah, we're and... going to go take them on a picnic and try and, you know, <laughs> uh, make them good. Like, <laughs> We just need more people for Will to execute, so. <laughs> True. His you know body God, count. His thirst, God is right. His, his Let's, thirst for uh, blood is not feeding you It's yet. the sword. If we do face off against this individual. It's like coming down from a caffeine high if he doesn't kill enough people. <laughs> he if he cranky. does, if we do face off against him, I do would request that if the opportunity arises, you leave his end to me. Take it mm -hmm. as recompense for the tortures. Fair enough. Good luck with Will around. I was gonna say sound. <laughs> I was gonna say sounds good, but I have a habit like, of, how much uh, HP does you have left, Jeff? Oh, about half. Double crit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to finish him off. I would very much appreciate that, Rufus. Thank you. All right, shall we start tracking? Sounds if good. If you to say me. so. Either way. All right, Jeff. All right. Well, um, I have advantage on tracking with my feet, and I have <laughs> uh, Hunter's Mark on him. Triple so, advantage. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't know if I need to roll three d twenty, but I'm gonna roll two. I don't think triple advantage is a thing, is it? No. Uh, so I got nineteen plus my. Uh, what do you think that would be a survival check? Yes. Uh, so twenty six. <laughs> I can smell where he's shit in the woods a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can definitely tell that from the tavern that you're currently in, he has left and gone towards the northeastern part of town um, in the area of the farm on the edge of town. Okay, so it's if we're, let's just say we're actually like traveling in that direction, when we get to the edge of town in air quotes, is it like off in the distance on its own property or is it literally like the edge of town on this farm uh it's it's uh, it's within view of the town it's not that far off um probably a good 10 15 minute walk from the from the edge of town okay so i guess we'll get towards the end of this i um have a good feeling that he's off uh in the direction of this farm over here great senses uh short wing I, I think I have an idea. How do you want to do this? So are we like in front of the farm now? Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you guys want to walk to the farm? Why don't you on, on the edge of town, correct? Right now. I just because I see it and yeah. I wanted to kind of like plan and I, that's where I think he is and we can pursue and I can I can make another roll, but I didn't know if there was a game plan. I think that I'm going to change my appearance to look like our former mentor and teacher and you can get in position so that when I give the signal we can surprise them and get the jump 